I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning, whether you're a friend or a friend we don't know yet, we ask that you sign in at the end of the uh, pew. There's a friendship pad. Please sign in on that. Uh, you have an insert in your bulletin of announcements, handbell, handbells tomorrow night at 6.30, trio practice, uh, hopefully you know who the three of you are, men's breakfast 9 o'clock on Tuesday, Richard's not here, I'm assuming that's at Benjamin's, yes sir. Richard's boss says yes, Benjamin's. Um, also, women's coffee. Uh, and where is that? Fellowship Hall. Fellowship Hall. Bring your knitting, bring your crocheting, bring your babies. We have a babysitter this time. Bring your babies and your knitting, okay. <clears throat> uh, men's Bible study uh, service circle at Lois's home at 9 30 on Wednesday. Uh, KFC. Also Wednesday, Thursdays, Buddy Bags and Celebrate Recovery, and then Adult Sunday School. Um, you can see down toward the bottom of the sheet there, there are plenty of things to sign up in the back. Uh, still working on a bus route. If you're interested in that, call the office. Reservations for the Dine with Doc. Next one is December 3rd. You do need to make a reservation because they are going to feed you. Um, Thursday, November 19th. If you are in need of a cake for any occasion, uh, the Boy Scouts will be having their uh, annual cake auction. This is a fundraiser for them, and the church has always been very supportive of the Scouts. In fact, they're the sponsors of this, this group. Um, but that's Thursday, November 19th, because um, isn't Thanksgiving the week after? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, those cakes are good for at least a week, so if you want to get out of baking. Um, poinsettias, if you want to order a poinsettia, you have to have those orders in uh, November 22nd, two weeks from today, uh, because they'll be uh, ordered the next morning. And you have a slip uh, in your bulletin for those poinsettias. Are there other announcements? Anything... The Family Life Committee is working on a bowling night, and um, one of the bowling alleys has a church night on Mondays. So I'm interested to see if anybody would like to be a part of that. If you have even the slightest interest, please see me after church or at the pitch-in, and I will call and find out more details about that. did forget to mention the pitch-in today. If you uh, have forgotten that, I'm sure there's enough food. If you forgot to bring something, there's plenty back there. Come fellowship. Other announcements this morning? How about birthdays or anniversaries? Uh, in the bulletin, uh, Friday was Karen Kent, um, Avery Lee Harbison, is this week and Bill and Tawny Russell have an anniversary anybody else nobody okay morning. As you know, we are in the preparation for the uh, Consecration Sunday in the Stewardship Program, and so we have a moment of discussion about that, and there'll be a little bit of homework for you. The first thing is look and see if there is a pencil somewhere there near in the pew, or if you have one handy, because there will be a couple things you'll be able to write down, and some that we're going to very much ask you to do. For the comments today, as we're two weeks away from that, uh, God has blessed my family, and I think probably most of our families would all feel that same way. And so we want to ask ourselves that question of, in effect, how can we be faithful stewards? How can we uh, multiply the blessings that we have? 
and share them. And so we may ask ourselves, how is God calling me to respond to the positive things, uh, the blessings that we have received? So as we move toward Consecration Sunday in two weeks, each of us will be thoughtfully considering our answer to that spiritual question. What percentage of my income or what portion of my income is God calling me to give? So I want you to start your homework here. <clears throat> in the bulletin there is an insert sheet and on one side is a stair step type of a graphic that you will see. Kind of looks like this. And we've got actual numbers for our congregation, and you feel free to write these in if you would like to have these numbers to get a sense of how the, our congregational giving has broken down with the 81 giving units of 123 people. At the very lowest level, where there's a, a level uh, line there, and it says members, write in 15 in front of that. And what that means is there are 15 members um, that have not been supporting, directly supporting, uh, are not recorded as contributing to the financial support of the church's ministries during the last 12 months. Now the next line above that would be 12 members. As you can see, that means weekly giving of from a penny basically to just under five dollars and think about how much that would be maybe the cost of a sandwich at you know bk or dq or somewhere like that the next level up 10 members in that category from five to just under ten dollars and again you can think about something that would be costing in that neighborhood you know maybe a meal at a fast food place or a movie ticket the next level is eight members in that category from 10 to just under $20. And so you, I'll go ahead and give you those numbers if you're interested in having those. The next one is seven members in the 20 to 30 range. And then the numbers that follow is four in the next line, six, five, another five, a third of five, three in the next to the last line, and one at the top of that stair-step line. So that kind of gives you a perspective on where we are in, in the giving units that we have here within our church. Now if you would, look at the other side of the handout sheet that you have. I'll give you a different way of looking at it. So turn the sheet over and look at this chart and scan, if you would, to the left side for weekly income and scan down through there. And of course, obviously not everyone is paid on a weekly basis. And so those of us in the retirement community, we're probably going to have to do a little mathematics here as we take a monthly uh, income and do some, do some uh, calculations there. But as you can, come up with a number there on a weekly income and then scan across to find the level of giving that you are currently making. And from there, then scan up to the top, and it'll give you the percentage of what it is that we've been doing, or what it is that you've been doing on a, on a family basis. So that gives you basically your level of giving to God's work through the congregation. And during the next couple of weeks, what we'd be expecting you to be doing is to be pondering the question, what percentage or what portion of my income <coughs> pardon me, is God calling me to give? <coughs> I'll now ask uh, the ushers to come forward. And what I want you to be doing is thinking about whether you might want to be moving across this range. For example, if you go through and you see that you're at a 6% level, look to the left and see how much it would be if you move to the 7% range. On the stair-step side, what you can be doing there is looking at how you might be able to move up one step. The ushers will now distribute to you reservation cards and if uh, you would please, we want you to fill these out now. This is for the Consecration Sunday Luncheon, two weeks from today. And we want you to do those now. Uh, don't set it aside and think you're going to put it back into the offering plate or something of that nature a little bit later on. But we want you to do that now. 
And if uh, there's another part of your family, someone who is not here, if you could, you know, have a good sense of whether or not they will be participating, we'd appreciate it if you would simply go ahead and do that. Uh, just a little more detail, the celebration lunch, and of course, is a catered meal. We hope everyone will be there. And we'll have you fill those out and the ushers will come back through in a little bit. And I didn't get to Janie ahead of time to see if you wanted to play a little music while these folks are filling these out, but if there's some, <laughs> not really. <laughs> That's what I get for not getting to her in advance and asking if she'd like to play something. But it will just take you just a minute to be able to do this. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that my trials only come to make me strong. Have you picked them up? Anyone that still has any of the sheets, we'll have some out here, so if you would please go ahead and go back through and pick the rest of them up. But kind of in a closing recall that you could be looking at the stair step type of thing here and figure out where you are on that line and consider, would we be able to move up to the next step as we move up that step in our giving? And consider on the other side if you could move up a percent. So this is simply what we want to do. And as we know, the consecration uh, Sunday process is asking what are we called by God to give through the congregation to support the work uh, throughout the world. So that's the concept that we're working with, and we'll continue to have other information uh, next Sunday and culminating in the Consecration Sunday on November 22nd. Everyone okay? Thank you so very much. If you'd rise as you're able and join in the call to worship. <clears throat> oh. Okay, we'll do call to worship now. We are the people of God, the Almighty. We are the people of the of God, the Redeemer. We are the people of God, the giver of life. Open to the inspiration of the Spirit, faith, flow, and love. Now, if you want to join in uh, with praise team, this is the day number 657.
us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I don't see very many happy and rejoicing faces out there. Talks with me and he talks with me. Do we listen always? <clears throat> if you join in the uh, opening prayer, Almighty God, you are the great creator. We praise you for lovingly calling our uh, chaos, for creating us out of nothing with your mighty breath, and for calling us very good. Loving God, you are the master gardener. We worship you for daily tending to your creation with care and for inviting us into creative caretaking with you. May we be stewards of your grace and use the gifts you have graciously given wherever you send us. To Jesus Christ be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and if the kids want to come down. Good morning. 
How's everybody this morning? I have somebody hiding behind me today. Are you all good this morning? Yeah. Good, very good. Come all the way down here, guys. You want to see things? You want to hear things? Come close. These girls don't bite yet. Okay, very good. Very good. I'm glad you could make it this morning. Some of you didn't come last week. You were busy. Last week, we talked about caring for our body by washing and keeping clean. And we invited God to clean our hearts of sin. That was how we cared for our bodies last week. This week, the sermon title is Caretakers in God's Garden. What do you think of that? Is that a hard thing to think about? Caretakers in God's Garden. What might that be? There are lots of ways to take care of God's garden and God's people. Okay? One of our verses that we will have read for us in just a little bit talks about we should use whatever gift we have received to serve others. Okay? We have lots of gifts, lots of ways that we can take care of God's garden and God's people. There's another verse in the Bible, and it reads, We all have different gifts according to the grace given to us. We all have different gifts and different ways that we can take care of things in God's garden. Okay? We all have different gifts that we share now, I'm going to ask Charlie to take my bag and dump it out down here on the bottom for me, please. Now, to work in God's garden, it takes... Oh, my goodness. What are those, Charlie? Tools. Tools. It takes lots of tools to do different jobs. Okay, what tools do we see down there? A shovel. A shovel. A paintbrush. A paintbrush. A hammer. A hammer. Okay, I see a flashlight. I see a spatula. Go get that one squiggly thing. What's that squiggly thing? A stethoscope? Have you seen that before? Those are all different tools that people may use to take care of a job, right? Those all are examples of different jobs. That one is for a nurse, yes. And the paintbrush is for a painter. And the hammer is for a carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter. That was one job. We all are gifted. We all have different gifts and talents that God would like us to use to care for things in his garden and to care for his people. Charlie may grow up and be a carpenter. Julia may grow up and be a nurse. That would be exciting. There are lots of jobs that we can do, and God gives us different talents. Okay? So we should remember as we grow up, we will use different talents than our neighbor to take care of God's people. So let's say a prayer that we will remember to grow up and ask God which tools we are to use in our life to care for his people. Dear Lord, we're thankful for the many talents and gifts that you give to each one of us. They are all different gifts and talents, but they all help take care of your people. 
And we thank you for all of these gifts and talents in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes. You want to take this back to Ross? What a blessing it is to have children in our church. Amen. Amen. Let's thank Randy and Elaine and everyone else that works with our children every week. There are many opportunities in our church to work with children. It is a wonderful blessing um, that we have the Buddy Bags ministry that we have, Kids for Christ program, opportunities to do children's chat on Sunday morning, children's church. There are a lot of opportunities. If your passion is working with children, or if you would like to stretch your, your knowledge of faith and understanding and the Bible, try and answer children's questions. <laughs> Um, let's, also, let's also thank um, our praise team and everyone that sings for us every week. And, and everyone that does all of the, the audiovisual stuff, and for Ross for being back there at the sound, um, Mark and Randy that do our PowerPoint, and everyone that allows us to kind of, allows those things to kind of go to the background so that um, they can serve us through that service um, so that we may worship together. Well, now we go into a, a time of prayer together. Um, does anyone have a brief praise or prayer request they would like to share with the rest of our church family? Kaylee has one. I'm not sure um, how many of you may know him, but uh, Jacob Kelp was in a car accident a few days ago. Um, I don't know him all that well, but I did go to school with him and um, pretty good friends with one of his cousins. So, um, As far as I know, he's pretty stable, but uh, they're not sure of all the problems he's going to handle when he um, is awoken from his sedation. So if you could keep him and his family in his prayers, I'm sure they would appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, well, I know we also have a number of people in our church uh, that are sick or have been sick um, in the last few weeks. Um, some of them are back with us because they're feeling better today. And um, praise God for that. Um, you can hear that my voice is potentially going to go out. Um, so you can pray for me for that. Um, although it may be God's way of humbling me and making me choose my words carefully. Anyone have anything else they need to share this morning? And Brenda said, please keep her in your prayers. Okay. Um, as, we, as we go to the Lord in prayer and we sing this, um, our prayer song together uh, in the garden, I was reminded by another pastor recently that sometimes as we do, if, we, if our tradition is to do a prayer song together as we prepare our hearts for prayer, that it might be nice to, to um, sing it almost as a whisper as we prepare to be quiet um, with the Lord. So if, if you could play softly, Janie, and then we'll kind of, we'll sing it together kind of as a whisper. He speaks in the God, thank you for your wonderful creation. Thank you for being a God who desired relationship and who brought the world into being. 
for creating the world out of love and care and bringing us into the world to take care of it and to, to live in communion with you, to have wonderful relationship with you. And thank you that even with the presence of sin and death and evil that you still are pursuing us and you still are here to renew us and renew your creation and bring it back into right relationship with you. God, I thank you uh, for the gifts that you have given us in this community, for inviting us into participation with you and loving the world and caring for the world, for making every one of us unique and uniquely equipping us to love one another and love our neighbor and to care for this planet that you've given us. Help us to always have a heart of gratitude for everything that you've put in our life, the many blessings that we receive, and fill us up so that our cup would run over, that your love would pour out of us, that it would be so much love we couldn't even contain it, and that it would just flow out of us through our, our hands and by our voices. Now we pray for those in our community who are sick, uh, those who are recovering, those who are um, suffering, who need your need a, a fuller awareness of your attention, of your presence, of your care, of your power, of your character, and need a reassurance from you that no matter what we face in this life, you will be with us. And no matter what we face in this life, you have resurrection for us in the life ahead. God, thank you for also being of love and compassion and mercy and peace. And that as the United States celebrates Veterans Day this week, that we would remember in our hearts those dear to us, friends and family and, and neighbors who have served in the military or who have been forever changed for service. God, we pray for those Christians who have served in the military and who struggle with forgiveness. Lord, they need to hear your message of grace. Help us to speak that into their lives. Lord, we pray for those who have returned from war and have had difficulty with re-entry. May the church be there to support them, show them love, and show them peace. We pray for those who are currently in harm's way, who are being touched by war all over the world, that your presence would be there among them, fighting for peace in our hearts and fighting for peace in our world. God, we pray for those soldiers who do not yet know you and that you would work through Christians in the militaries around the world and through chaplains that they might know you. God, we pray for all those around our world who have been affected by war and that you would be with them in their suffering. God, as we assemble for worship as citizens of God's kingdom in Jesus Christ, help us to remember that we're not citizens ultimately subject to any nation, that the church spans all nations around the world. And then in worship, we celebrate the good news of God's grace and love in Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the Lord and Savior of the world, of whom all creation is redeemed and restored to the glory of you. We look forward to a day when no community will be asked to release its loved ones for the purposes of war. We look forward to a day when in a new heaven and new earth, you, our King, would fully exercise your mighty power and usher in unending peace. As we enjoy the freedoms of this nation, may we be called, God, to remember our true freedom in Jesus Christ and help us to remember that your agenda for the world is larger than our own. And that may we remember that Jesus calls us to radical love, even radical love for our enemies. 
Help us fulfill your call to discipleship, which requires radical faith and obedience to you, even unto the willingness to die for the gospel and to die for our neighbor. God, we're also mindful of the fact that today is the international day of prayer for the persecuted church. And in some ways, this is the church's Veterans Day. Let us for a moment remember all those who have given their lives for you and for the gospel. For God, you know the plight of people far away who have been oppressed by governments and peoples in places where Christianity is an unpopular choice. God, you know that the day would come when truth-telling would be despised, siding with the oppressed, part of the road less traveled. But have mercy on us, O oh God, and upon persecuted Christians there and here who are willing to suffer consequences for speaking your name, in word or in deed, in defiance or in advocacy. Grant courage and strength to all who dare to live out their convictions for you out loud. And may as we gather together with Christians around the world in love and in solidarity, solidarity, pray the prayer that you gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as we continue in a time of prayer and also in a series of stewardship, it's time to, to give offerings unto the Lord to remember that we are good stewards of everything that he has given us. Whether it be our gifts, our, our will, our choices, our decisions, uh, the resources that He has given us. Everything ultimately belongs to Him and we offer it back up to Him at this time. lift these up to the Lord together in prayer. Forgiving God, people give for so many reasons. Guilt, joy, obligation, gratitude, obedience, hope, control, thankfulness. Remind us of your call to examine everything we have. After all, our money and possessions are really gifts from you. You call us to use them wisely, to share them openly, to give them generously. So thank you for this celebration of giving. Receive this offering and release us from the foolish temptation to believe that it is best spent on ourselves. Amen.
Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 8, and then verse 15. You can find those in your Pew Bible, um, the Old Testament, page 2. This is about Adam and Eve. This is the account of heavens and the earth, and them, and when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth, and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and the man began a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put in man he had formed. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it, and the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Now from the New, chap the New Testament, we're going to read from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. And in your pew Bibles, that will be the New Testament, page 218. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks from the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, Charlie. Well, this morning, uh, it's my excited privilege to introduce a family member of mine who's come to give our message this morning. Um, my great uncle Howard Snyder is, is here with us. He is a retired uh, faculty member from Asbury Seminary, where I went to school. Um, he's taught many other places as well, and is currently a visiting director of research at the Manchester uh, Wesley Research Center in Manchester, uh, England, and uh, he and my Aunt Jan have come to be with us to worship this morning, and uh, he'll be talking um, about those passages that Darlene just read for us. So if you please welcome Dr. Snyder. Well, thank you very much. It's a delight to be with you all this morning since uh, Pastor Brian and uh, Jennifer were appointed here. We've been praying for you. We've been praying for them, you know, so we, we keep you in our minds and hearts and, and prayers, uh, not only week by week, but day by day, actually, in terms of uh, prayer concerns, since we're talking family, not uh, personal family, as well as the family of God. Well, we're going to talk uh, this morning about... Um, caretakers in God's garden, and we're going to look at the scriptures that were just read. Um, and if you just go on to the scripture there, um, the, on the, the, the next slide there. Um, and then go on to the next one, if you would, as well. Now, I'm not going to read this because it's already been read to you. You can see it there, and you can, look, you can see it uh, in your scripture. Um, and if you go on to the, uh, to the next slide, notice uh, the last statement there. I will read. Uh, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to keep it and uh, to till it and to keep it, to care for the garden. So the Bible talks about being caretakers in God's garden. Of course, that's Adam and Eve. We apply it more generally to the whole creation, and then we see how in the New Testament that's affirmed. If you go on then to the next slide, you see the one that, that was read from First Peter, uh, which says, like good stewards, 
of the manifold or the many colored grace of God. Each one of us should use whatever gift God has given us to serve others. Now I want to suggest that there's two different kinds of stewardship that are pictured there. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, if you go on to the next slide, I want to, I want to um, oh, by the way, this, is, this comes largely as a condensation of some things in my book, uh, Salvation Means Creation Healed. Uh, now uh, I want to, you go on to the next slide, I want to tell, before we get into that, I want to <coughs> tell you a little story. <clears throat> uh, one day when I was about more or less eight, um, I went with my father. We went to a neighboring town where there was a train station because there was a package coming in by train. This is before Federal Express and all that. So we went to the train station uh, to pick up this package and um, we parked the car. My dad parked the car and we were walking up toward the station and there was a railroad track there, a railroad crossing. And I heard a noise, and I saw there's a train coming. And, I, and then I could see it coming down the, the track, headed right for the road, and right for, for where my father, which would be Pastor Brian's uh, great-grandfather, uh, was about to cross. And I, I became frightened. I was scared. You know, is he going to step right in front of that train? And it got louder and louder, and I stopped, and he was walking ahead, and I started to call out, Daddy, Daddy, and, but he couldn't hear me because of the, of the train. And so the train got closer, he, began, he continued to step, step right out onto the track, and the train went by, all great noise, and I looked and he was still standing there. I thought, what? I don't understand this. And then, of course, I sort of recovered from my fright, and I walked a little for, further ahead, and I saw, oh, there's two sets of, of tracks there. And he, he was aware of that, and he could see. He was taller than I was. He was closer than I was. And so that he could see. He was not stepping in front of the train. I didn't have to worry. Uh, but what I, what I learned from that is there are different ways of seeing things. I was seeing things from a low perspective. He was seeing things from a higher, broader perspective because he was older than I, more mature than I. He knew what was going on. I didn't. Um, and that's what I sort of want to do this morning. I want to uh, take this concept of stewardship and raise it maybe to a higher level uh, in terms of the whole creation that God has made. And uh, so we're going to go through a series of slides here. Let's go on to the next one uh, here. Uh, we're talking about stewardship. The foundational question of stewardship that I want to raise is not so much about money and time and so on, but more a more basic question. That is, what is the relationship? biblically between God, people, and the earth and heaven. That is, God and the human creation and the rest of creation. What is the relationship? Uh, actual right now, present, and then eschatological, which means on into the future. Not only now, but what, what is the relationship now and what is the relationship that God will bring finally in the new creation and the new heaven and uh, new earth. Now, if you go on to the next slide, you'll see here that I'm raising the question, what is the biblical picture? And we're going to, to see that here in, in a moment. Um, so go on to the next slide, if you would. Uh, the Bible is a story, not only of God and people, but of God, people, and the land. We see this in Genesis 1. We see it all the way through Scripture. Very often, when God talks about his people, he also talks about his land. And we talk about the promised land and so on. And, and throughout the New Testament, or throughout the Old Testament, and the whole Bible, there's a lot about God, God's people, and God's land. So that's the perspective we want to look at. And if, if you uh, move on to the next slide there, the Look at Deuteronomy 8.10. Very simple little verse. When you have eaten and are satisfied, this, this is the children of Israel about to go into the promised land. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Very simple verse, but notice it says, you, the people, God who gave the land and the land itself. So I want to diagram that if you go on to the next slide there. And what it's talking about is God and people and land. So what I've done here, I don't know whether when you were in school you ever had to diagram sentences or not. I did when I was in grade school. But this is a kind of a diagram of this verse. God gives the land. 
You see that in, uh, in not only in, in this verse, but throughout the Old Testament and in the creation account. God gives the land, the land nourishes the people, and the people are to praise God. That is the relationship that God intends between us and the whole creation. So you see the arrows there, God gives, the land nourishes, the, uh, the people praise God. But if you move on to the next slide, you can see that we can reverse those arrows if we look at other places in Scripture. God calls and blesses a people people, the children of Israel, and in the New Testament, the church, the people then are to care for and enjoy the land, and the land glorifies God. Many of the Psalms talk about how creation glorifies uh, God. So this is the, uh, the re revealed relationship in Scripture between God, people, and land. And if, if you move on to the next slide, uh, you can see that it's a relationship of shalom. So here I've put the arrows in both directions. Because that's what God intends. The rela shalom means peace, it means flourishing, it means proper relationship. And that is what God intends. We, we know that in many ways our world is spoiled. But God intends a relationship of peace, shalom, uh, mutual care uh, between God, the people, and the land. And so if we look at that perspective there of people, that's us. And God blesses us, and we are to both bless God and to be stewards of the good land that he has given to us. Now, that's, that's the picture of the Old Testament. If we move on now to the New Testament, the next slide, uh, we, we see that God is not only the, the God of Israel, he's the God, a God of all nations. And so the prophets especially began to remind Israel, it's not just you, it's God is concerned about all nations, and not only the land of Israel, but all land, and not only the people of Israel, but all people. And so the, uh, in the next uh, slide, if you go on to that one, uh, God, the God of all nations, chooses Israel, and he gives them a land, he gives them a particular peoplehood, but his whole, his larger intent throughout scripture is that all the nations should be blessed and that all the earth should be blessed. And that's the promise, of course, that was given to Abraham, and it's the promise that's fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So the next slide then shows the, um, the New Testament picture of that, where, where now we have God revealed as Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Reconciliation through Jesus Christ. That's the fulfillment of the Old Testament. Reconciliation of all things, it says in Ephesians 1.10, Colossians 2, and many other places. Reconciliation of all things through Jesus Christ. So God's intent in the scripture is to bring reconciliation between God, himself, and the people, and all creation. And so that is uh, the foundation, shall we say, of stewardship. The fact that God is the God over all creation and that he has called his people to praise him and to be his stewards in the earth, which includes, of course, proclaiming the gospel that others might come to know, and it includes all the ways that we are to care for God's good creation. So with that as kind of foundation, let's go on now to talk more specifically about stewardship. So go on to the next slide, if you would, there. Jesus said we should pray as we have prayed this morning. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God's intent is that God's will should be done on earth, in the earth, in all the ways that God's intent. So the, go on to the next slide. Uh, this is literally the whole gospel for the whole world. It's the foundation for mission. The, this, that God's will might be done uh, on earth as it is in heaven is the foundation for discipleship, that we would live in that way. And specifically this morning, it's the foundation for stewardship, the relationship, stewardship relationship, the care relation, caregiving relationship that God gives us in behalf of the rest of the world. So I'm, we're looking at stewardship in that sense. Now the next slide goes, pictures that in terms of the whole creation and the way the Bible talks about the land. If, if we read through scripture carefully, we see that if the land is left out of the biblical equation, that is if we think of the gospel only as a matter of God and people, we miss the larger story. The story of salvation doesn't simply doesn't add up in the way that uh, the Bible teaches if we forget that God's intent involves not only his relationship to people, but his relationship to the land as well, and that inner relationship of concern that we were just picturing. Now, go on to the next slide, if you would. <clears throat> the key de determining factor, we believe this as Christians, we've been celebrating this this morning, the key determining 
a determining fact in accomplishing God's plan is, the next slide, Jesus Christ. That's the center, right? Reconciliation through Jesus Christ. Colossians 1, 19 and 20 says, In him, in Jesus, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace, by making shalom, through the blood of his cross. And many other New Testament scriptures speak of that. Go on to the next slide if you would. Uh, but what we see in the New Testament is not only the, the story of Jesus' life and death, but also his resurrection. And the, Paul assures us in Romans that the, what happened to Jesus in the resurrection is what will happen to us if we follow in his way. The same thing will happen to us. That is, as, we, as Jesus was raised from death physically, so we will be raised physically. And in fact, uh, Paul assures us in Romans 8 that God's intent is to bring resurrection, that is to bring wholeness, healing to the whole of creation. So we are called to stewardship, loving, nurturing care now in the hope and in the light of what God is intending to bring. So go on to the next slide if you would. Romans 8, 21. The creation itself, the whole creation that God has made, the garden and all that that includes, will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. The next slide please. So God intends, in this larger bi biblical picture, to redeem people with their environment, not out of their environment. That is, God intends that all things should be reconciled through Jesus Christ. God to bring the new heaven and the new earth, judging that which is evil, recreating, healing that which is, uh, uh, is open to the grace of God. Okay, and then go on to the next slide if you would. God has made a glorious creation for us to enjoy. We know this. We look around. We were over at uh, Turkey Run State Park last night there. But wherever we go, we see many aspects of the beauty of the creation that God has given us. God has made a glorious creation for us to enjoy, to respect, to understand, and to care for. The next slide, please. God has made uh, this creation that we could participate in it, be a part of it, and to enjoy, that is to appreciate, to take pleasure in his creation, that includes art and music and so on, to respect, to realize that God has his own purpose for that which he has created and has its own right to exist, to understand, to study, so there's room for science, and study of the environment, study of all the, the aspects of the creation that God has made, and then, of course, as Christians, care for, stewardship, protection, to take care of. Then the next slide, please. So, I want to talk about two dimensions, then, of this stewardship, and they're found in the verses that we just talked about. Go on to the next, if you would. The two dimensions, stewardship of God's grace, 1 Peter 4, Whatever great God, gift God has given you, be a good steward of it. And stewardship of God's world. Next slide, please. Stewardship of God's grace, 1 Peter 4. And stewardship of the garden, the, as God put Adam and Eve to, in the garden to care for it. So I'm applying that to us today. And then the next slide, please. So here are the two dimensions of stewardship, or the twin dimensions of stewardship. The earth and God's grace. And God has given us as Christians, through Jesus Christ, the grace of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we can be good stewards of all that God has given us. And these then become the, the twin stewards, uh, the twin dimensions of God's uh, of stewardship. We'll go on to the next, if you would. In other words, God's grace and God's world. How wonderful that we can celebrate the God of creation and the God who makes grace available to us through Jesus Christ so that we can be good stewards of that grace that he has given us. Next slide, please. Uh, creation, stewardship of the created uh, world. So it's certainly time, money, but also land, uh, empl employment, possessions, influence, relationships, art, music, all the good gifts that God gives us in the created order. Uh, we are to enjoy and to thank God for and to be good stewards of. And then, uh, and then of God's grace, stewards of God's grace. Well, what does that mean? Uh, in the uh, children's chat, uh, we heard a bit about that already, didn't we? The different gifts that God gives us. But think of the gifts of the Spirit 
the many gifts, the diverse gifts of the Spirit. Prayer is a gift from God we sh that, that we can use uh, to glorify God and to intercede for um, others and so on. The gifts, the diverse gifts of the Spirit, each of you, each of us has received a gift from God to serve in some way or other. Service and whatever that may, way may be, ministry, witness, all the, the gracious gifts that God gives us so that we can serve Him in the world. So, the two dimensions of God's grace, stewardship of God's grace, as we just saw, and then the next slide, uh, stewards of God's grace. Uh, the grace that God gives us, the grace of, uh, in Jesus Christ, the grace that sought us, like lost sheep, the grace that bought us and saved us by grace, the grace that gifts us, the gifts of the Spirit, the grace that powers us by the Holy Spirit. It's not just our own resources, it's the resources of Spirit, the resources of grace. So stewards of God's grace, and then also uh, stewardships of the garden, the created order, again in Genesis uh, 2, 15, as we've been citing. So uh, the next slide, please. The, these then are the two dimensions. This is what I want to leave with you with this morning, this sense of, of uh, the two dimensions of God's grace, or rather two dimensions of stewardship. The stewardship of God's grace, the stewardship of God's world. A broader view of understanding, I think, than, than uh, uh, the world has, certainly, but it's the biblical teaching with regard to that. So, the created world that God has given us, it's our responsibility to take care of the, and it's our essential material resources. We depend on uh, the earth. Uh, some of you may be farmers, and many of you may have been raised on, on farms. We, we used to live in, when I grew up in Spring Harbor, Michigan, I had a farmer next door, and I used to help him out some uh, in his farming. And it, we know that the, the food we eat, the air we breathe, all comes ultimately from the earth. And then stewardship of God's grace, which is our essential help and supernatural resource in order to fill, fulfill God's mission. So we have the so-called natural resource of the created order, the supernatural resource of God's grace that we can together use these good gifts of God's for mission in all its dimensions. Then the next slide. Just to remind us then again that God intends to redeem people with their environment, not out of their environment. And then the uh, reminder, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And so we become stewards within that. Uh, and reminding us again that God intends to re redeem people with their environment, not out of us. And then so finally, we can pray, as we have prayed this morning, but may, maybe even these, thinking of these dimensions, may God's kingdom come, may his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May God bless these words and these thoughts to our understanding, and may we be open to God's grace to be good stewards in all the ways that he opens up doors for us to be. God bless.
Well, it's good to worship with you all this morning. Uh, as we take a, uh, this particular message on stewardship and, and think about it this week, apply it to our lives, may we remember that there are, are two dimensions of Christian stewardship or of gospel stewardship um, that, that Dr. Snyder has shared with us this morning. And one is that being stewards of His grace through the gifts that God has given us, and the other is being stewards of of his land and of his creation that he has also blessed us with those two dimensions and so we may think and reflect this week how are all of us being stewards of the gospel by caring for creation and by caring for the grace God has given us and sharing it with the whole world so hear now the benediction of the Lord may the Lord God Almighty maker of cre creator of heaven and earth through his son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit Allow us to be good stewards of creation and good stewards of His grace, sharing the love of Jesus Christ with the whole world. Amen. Go in God's peace.